What's up guys? Welcome back to the Skeleton Closet where we talk celebrity news and hot topics. My name is JT in case you are new here. Again, we're going to be talking about our favorite daytime talk show host of The View. So let's get right into the video. I'm going to just run down my shout outs. The dun dun. <laughs> On today's episode of The View, the ladies return for their second episode of their brand new season, season 25, and the ladies had a new face on the panel. That face was Mia Love. Mia Love officially was welcomed to the show as a guest co-host, sitting in Meghan McCain's seat. A lot of people on Twitter were reacting to Mia Love being on the show. They were very excited and happy about Mia Love being there. Um, a lot of people had a lot of different things to say about Mia Love being on the show. So let's just get right into Mia Love being on the show and what the ladies talked about on today's episode. Now, on today's episode, the ladies talked about abortion, the Texas law, mask mandates, as well as doctors denying treatment for those who are not vaccinated and men having a say so over women's bodies. The ladies started the show off by talking about Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas and the new law against abortions. So the ladies started out by talking about this and this is what Mia Love had to say about this particular law that was just passed. The question really is, are any of these men qualified to write a law when they are this freaking clueless about a woman's body? I mean, I had the same reaction when I watched the clip, a bit of a visceral reaction, because as AOC broke that down, I realized you're also assuming women have 28-day cycles. Unless you're on a pill, you rarely, which then it's a moot point, you rarely have a 28-day cycle. So watching men discuss reproductive health with certain men when they know so little, it does bother me. He also lacks an understanding on rape, because in 2019, Texas has the most rapes in the United States, and nine out of 10 of those were aggressed by um, an, um, an acquaintance. Somebody you knew. Yeah, right. yeah someone yeah. you knew. Right. So these aren't people on the streets because you, you, you can't clear the streets when they're in our homes. And so this bothered me because we're never going to agree on this issue. If people are pro-life, you believe it's murder, you're on one side. If you're pro-choice, you don't see it as murder. That's not why you're doing it. You disagree on the science of life and when it starts. So wait one second, let me just finish this thought. But so the danger here on this law is not agreeing on the issue. It's that we're deputizing average citizens to turn on their neighbors in a way that I think is a slippery slope because this is a model now, Texas, for other states to also sidestep Roe v. Wade, but it also becomes a model for bad faith in other states that maybe lean liberal. Now your neighbors may come for your guns. So just be weary because I think when you have a law like this, well, it is a dangerous precedent. But you have a second amendment. It's not gonna be that easy. I think it's false choices. It, they're, they're giving women false choices. This is what frustrates me about government. Instead of actually taking care of the story from the beginning, mm -hmm. they're trying to pick up broken pieces and they're making it worse. Why not try and empower women? Why not giving them more options when it comes to their reproductive health, yeah. like providing over-the-counter contraceptives, uh, birth control pills mm -hmm. instead of condoms in Plan B. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I am pro-life. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always been pro-life with the exception of rape, incest, and the life of a mother. Yep. I don't think government should be going into families when it comes to making a decision yep. about, about such important issues and personal and issues personal. that are damaging yeah. to yeah. women. So here's what I think. Why not treat women like assets that can be developed instead of liabilities that need to be managed. I completely yeah. Agree. You know, we had, yeah. me, me and I had a, a wonderful conversation in, in our Hot Topics room because she was unaware that as a Catholic, I am also uh, pro-life. You know, I, I at this table, that term, I think we're all pro-life. We so are we, all yeah. pro-life. So we sort of all, all differ in terms I'm of what that. i for the death penalty in some cases. And, but she's in yeah. for, for the death penalty I in am. some cases, and I think right. you are as well, right. but I'm, you know, for the sanctity of life across the board, mm -hmm. but we had this very interesting discussion um, in, in the sense that why don't we em empower women? And the Catholic Church is against birth control in, mm -hmm. in many ways, and that's something that I differ uh, from as well. But I do not understand why someone like uh, Texas Governor Abbott is, is saying that, you know, this, this ridiculous thing about 
rapists and how they're going to be enforcing the rape laws. I spent my career as a sex crimes prosecutor, and rape is the most underreported mm. violent crime in the country. Yeah. In the country. So for him to be so ignorant as to say that that is how they are going to combat this uh, crisis that they have developed themselves is so obnoxious, and also, really. Sonny, why so is obnoxious. he now coming up with this plan to get get the rapist? Why did he Where get was him before? He before? Yeah, was he exactly. Well, the other thing is, let's face <laughs> it, um, he's out of step with his own party because 84% of Americans, including 74% of Republicans, are in favor of abortion when it comes to rape, and incest, yes. so he's out of step. Yes. But you know what? Now, starting off this segment, Whoopi definitely introduced Mia Love as a very nice woman. Some people might have seen this as a jab at Meghan McCain because we all know that the princess of Arizona, Nutmeg, was not that nice of a person to the other co-host. They liked to play like they were friends. They had a cordial understanding with one another. But honestly, behind the scenes, I have a feeling that most of them did not really like Meghan McCain because she acted like a spoiled brat. So to start off, it looks like the ladies were very pleased to have Mia Love there. They welcomed her with open arms. And I have to say, personally, I really enjoyed seeing three women of color on the show today, especially a woman of color from a conservative party. So that was definitely good to see, and I was very happy to see that. Um, moving on from that, the ladies talked about Greg Abbott and the law that was passed in Texas. For the most part, all of the ladies do lean more so pro-choice, or no one is not for life. Everybody is pro-life. It's just they have a difference of opinion on when the law should allow an abortion to be legal. Now, specifically, Joy had something to say about the Republican Party as a whole. She definitely laid into the Republican Party and men specifically saying there is a history of stupidity amongst Republicans on this topic. And then she went on to quote some of the Republican men in history who have said some very ignorant things about abortions and rape. I believe if Megan was there, she probably would have been offended because she definitely attacked the entire Republican Party. Mia Love definitely took these comments in stride, but she didn't completely agree with Joy Behar and her assessment of the entire Republican Party. She did say that most of the time or in the past, there have been Republicans who have said some very bad faith and ignorant comments. So this is a characteristic of a co-host that I can disagree with but appreciate because Mia Love understands that they have said some very bad things and she acknowledges that and she's very honest about that. I think most of the time in the past when Meghan McCain was defending her party she wanted to ignore the facts and just completely be at the defense of her own party and just want to be up in arms about everything because she was offended because she subscribed to a particular political party even when they were wrong. Mia Love goes on to say, I have worked with some great Republicans that really do care about life. We were all disgusted by that assessment. You obviously don't know and you shouldn't be talking about that about reproductive health. Allow us to do that. We can educate you about what's going on. Now, moving on from that segment, they moved into the segment about COVID, doctors denying service or treatment to people that are unvaccinated. Mia Love had a very different opinion to most of the co-hosts, and I have to agree with her on this because I also agree that this could be a very slippery slope. Doctors do take a Hippocratic oath, and that oath basically states that they are supposed to help anybody that needs their assistance. Now, I personally have to agree with me on this because this could be a very slippery slope. What if doctors started to decide who they wanted to, if a person comes into ER and they want to decide that they don't want to help them, that can be a very slippery slope, especially for someone who is a minority. Like I just have to think about that in a sense of, of being discriminated against. However, Joy definitely combated that statement saying, I think you have a good point about it, but smoking as a long-term habit, that's something that somebody got into. This is a decision that somebody makes based on false information. I say, if you have a case, go to Tucker Carlson and make your case because he's telling you lies. It is not far-fetched to say that Tucker Carlson and the rest of the Fox News pundits have been lying to their viewers about the vaccine because they are telling their viewers lies and they are somewhat responsible for the widespread misinformation that is going on across the country about masks, about vaccines, and about COVID. So I think 
a lot of people just need to take accountability for their own actions and what they have done to prolong this pandemic. With that being said, Mia Love and Joy and some of the co-hosts definitely did not agree, kind of had difference of opinions on certain things. However, even though they did disagree, they seemed to disagree on almost every point but neither one of them interrupted one another and they seem to still be able to keep it respectful. And a lot of people on Twitter noticed this. Um, a lot of the tweets from today's episode congratulated Mia Love and also gave kudos to the women for being respectful for one another and also having a civilized conversation. Um, one of them saying, wow, a civilized conversation without a whiny, petulant voice arguing with their coworkers. Wow. Definitely a shot at Meghan McCain and... It goes on and on and on. Another one says, the view is so much more pleasant, no anxiety at all. Watching, I'm watching again. I don't agree with Mia Love, but I respect her view as everything isn't about her family and Arizona. Definitely another shot at Meghan McCain because, you know, we all love to call her Princess of Arizona and Nutmeg. I know I kind of coined her as that. I definitely dubbed Meghan McCain as Nutmeg. That's definitely her nickname for me. Um, going off on from that, Mia seems to fit into the panel so well, hashtag The View. The ladies of The View seem so happy being back together in studio, loving the energy and the new set. The new set is beautiful. I love how sleek and clean it is. So happy that The View is back because I am a avid View watcher. I am obsessed with The View. I feel like the season's only going to get better and better moving forward. So I'm definitely excited to see this. My only complaint about today's episode is Mia Love screaming. I don't know if she was attempting to yell because she was just nervous or she wanted to make sure she projected into her mic and she wanted to be heard. But I was getting a sense that she was yelling. I had to turn down my TV a couple times, but other than that, Everything else was amazing. I'm pretty sure the producers are going to give her notes of today's episode just to let her know, like, you know, tune it down a little bit, okay? It's okay to project, but don't yell. So yes, after doing a little bit further research, it looks like Mia Love will be returning for tomorrow's episode on September 9th, which is tomorrow. I am definitely excited to see that, see what else the ladies have to talk about. And on Friday, I believe they're going to have a flashback host who is Star Jones. Now that's gonna be interesting as well because Star Star Jones had a kind of a tumultuous exit from The View. Um, there was a little bit of feud between her and her other co-host. There was a whole bunch of drama when she had gastric bypass surgery and the ladies were forced to lie about her surgery and they wanted to, basically she just wanted everybody to think that she had natural weight loss, but that is not the case. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about today's episode of The View. For the most part, the consensus today was that Mia Love was a very respectable voice on The View today, and a lot of the viewers appreciated that because she was a conservative voice that wasn't combative. She was a conservative voice that was civilized in arguing their viewpoint. And I think a lot of the viewers are going to appreciate that moving forward. I think for the most part, a lot of the viewers were absolutely fed up with the way that Meghan McCain acted on The View when interrupting, screaming, and yelling at other co-hosts when she didn't agree with them. Um, and also pitching a fit when she wasn't able to get her point across effectively as if she didn't understand that these are very short segments and you have a lot to say, but you need to be respectful of other people's time and the show itself. So I think this was something that was very much appreciated by the viewers because they didn't have to hold on to their seats and just wonder what that co-host was gonna do for today. However, we're gonna have to wait and see how the ratings go throughout the season without Meghan McCain. Maybe the show will continue to do better. Maybe there will be a dip in the ratings. We're not sure. Um, personally, I enjoyed Meghan McCain because she was entertaining, but a lot of people were fed up with that. And the yelling and the arguing and the eye rolls and the bratty behavior that Meghan McCain was exhibiting. So we'll just have to wait and see what the rest of the season looks like. Let me know what you guys thought about today's episode. Did you appreciate me and love being on the show today and a different conservative voice that was not combative and that was very welcoming, warm, and passionate about what they were talking about without being rude and disrespectful or bratty? Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about that as well. Did you miss Meg McCain today? Do you think that the antics, the bratty, Princess of Arizona antics that she put on on the show are going to be missed. Do you think the ladies of The View miss her? Personally, I don't because they haven't even 
mentioned her. So let me know what you guys think about that and what you expect from the rest of the season. And are you excited about Star Jones being on the show this Friday? If you know, like I know, Star had a pretty interesting exit from the show, as well as when she was on the show, they wanted the rest of the co-hosts to lie about her surgery when she lost weight. So let me know what you guys think about all that down in the comment section below. I definitely appreciate you guys watching so, 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 so much. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button so that I can know how you felt about today's video as well so that you can help me get it pushed through in the algorithm a little bit. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can join us in the closet and become part of the family. Now, that is all for today's video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.